Hey guys, I want to talk peaches with you guys really quickly. Um, just to give you guys a couple updates, the Alberta peach here, we just picked one right now, is actually ripe. Um, what I'm seeing now and why I had to pick this one a bit early is that I'm getting these mummified fruits up in here and they really don't look very good. They're really kind of molding up on the tree and just attracting things that I don't want to attract especially the SWD um, or different fruit flies. If these are fermenting, it's not gonna be good. Um, you can see they're on the ground here because we've got a cat bird that literally comes in here and just takes off an entire peach off the tree. I mean, they're that strong. And this is kind of what they love to eat. So they're all on the ground here and I gotta pick a lot of these up at some point and get this out of here to not attract anything we don't want or create an ecosystem that we don't want. Um, so I'm coming in here with the ones that are definitely looking good and picking them off. It's others here, you can kind of tell that, you know, they're a bit green still on the yellow side. And that's kind of what you're looking for is that you got the red side here, but then you turn it over and here's the yellow side. If this is green in any way, it's definitely not ready to be picked. Also up in this area on the top, where the stem is, if there's any green in here, don't pick it. And um, ideally, we should have let this go even longer. But again, I'm pretty um, afraid of these birds, and they've already knocked off probably about half of the peaches, which is kind of crazy. There hasn't been many to begin with on this tree, and I'm kind of just wanting to preserve the last bit of peaches of the year. All the other trees are done. Alberta's the last one. Our Red Haven next to it put out about 300 peaches. I'm not kidding. And I think because Alberta put out so much last year that it just didn't bear well this year. Um, no frost, nothing like that. So hopefully now that these guys are going to enter their fifth summer, next year will be their fifth summer, they'll both be bearing at the same time pretty heavily. And I'll just have a really long window of peaches. It's at least a month. I mean, the Red Haven, I, was, I started harvesting, I want to say even like a month and a half ago. It's been, it seems like a long time. Um, and now that it's like late August, actually the Alberta's coming in. So it's really a long season. Just between these two trees, it's kind of what is really what we should be thinking about as backyard fruit growers is to get ourselves a longer ripening window. And believe it or not, at certain times of the year, certain things just do better than others. It just is a, a fact, right? And no matter what we plant, whether it's annuals and, and vegetables, they all grow at a specific time and they grow better at specific times. And maybe our Red Haven earlier in the season, as an example, wouldn't really do well, let's say. I'm gonna give you guys an example. I'm gonna take you guys over to these raspberries because this is a really good example of kind of what to expect as a backyard grower is that, here's a, here's a good example. The raspberries back in here, I don't really let these guys fruit. They're fruiting now, but I don't let them fruit on their, their old canes. And I only let them fruit on the primocane. So on the floricane, which is last year's wood, that's two year old wood, I don't let those fruit because I'm not going to get them anyway. The birds will come in here, see the red fruit, and pick off every single one of these. And I won't get a thing. So why even bother with it? The crop is very light. And I just find that later in the season, our raspberries, I can grow them unprotected. Um, I can kind of let them do their thing. They're more tidy this way, right? Because they have the new primocanes that came up from the base, these new green canes. See those? And they just overall perform better. I get about a pint every day when these things are established. We just transplanted them out this spring. We, we moved them. But I would legitimately get a pint every day per plant um, from August all the way to the end of the year at our first frost in November. So the point is the same thing when it comes to these peaches is that maybe the peaches late in August We'll do better maybe with disease, maybe with pests, maybe with the birds. There's less birds at this time of the year. Even though we do have that one cat bird that's coming in, you know, it's just a better time, I think, in general, to have peaches. So I think it's nice 
not only in the sense that we have these peaches at different times so that we can be eating peaches for a longer period of time, but also for what is actually just happening in our environments. You know, it's just a better way, I think, to be approaching this whole thing as a backyard grower. Um, some other things that I want to mention here about the peaches before I let you guys go is that I just really recommend these. Out of all the stone fruits so far, I really recommend these and I really recommend, I think the form of a spy yang, these trees, really just works out super well. Um, this is something that is not difficult to do. It's not difficult to train them in this shape. And they have this really nice airflow, guys. I have some permanent stuff down here that's very accessible. I don't have to go up here if I don't want for these larger peaches or for these peaches up higher up on the tree. First off, there's going to be less peaches up there anyway. They really like to fruit heavier on these branches that are growing downwards that I train sort of downwards. They take up less space this way. What I could do, in all honesty, is make myself a nice little terrace in here. You got the peaches here and I could come out maybe to where Ginzi is and put in another row of Aspaye trees and then come down again. And it's kind of sloping downwards anyway where the sun is normally west and it would really make a whole lot of sense. Um, and then come in here again down in the next row and make myself a nice little row of Aspaye stone fruits. And to be honest with you, I just think they just perform so much better this way. And you're not really supposed to be espying peaches. It's like something that people say you don't really want to do. But I have no issues with disease in any form. I had a little bit of the peach leaf curl at the beginning of the season and then that was it. It was gone. Disappeared. I haven't seen it again. Um, well, maybe I have right in here on this leaf. There's a little bit of it, I guess. Maybe. But the point is, is that they have such great airflow that the fruit is really unaffected by a lot of the disease and then also the leaves are unaffected. The tree seems a lot healthier. I'm not really seeing many issues with this. And it's also, you know, getting it in pretty much full sun all day also really helps, but um, it hasn't really been an issue. And the big, the big thing that people are kind of worrying about is, well, how do you prune such a tree? How do you get this thing managed and maintained so that it fruits every year? Well, it's quite simple and we're gonna come in here and just chop out the three-year-old wood, maybe the four-year-old wood, and then that's it. Every year you renew that process of trying to get three or four-year-old wood, and hopefully that fruits heavily. Get yourself more of these more intricate systems of branches down lower. Keep those for a longer period of time, and these really big, intricate branches up here that are three-plus years old, we're gonna cut those out in the, um, in the winter time. And that's gonna keep that renewal process to make sure we have enough one-year-old wood to then have our fruit buds for next year. This is where the fruit will form next year on this particular one-year-old branch, especially the branches that are growing downwards or even horizontally. It really seems to work out super well. But anyway, that's kind of what I wanted to get at here, guys, is that these are just beautiful, wonderful producing trees. I don't have much issues with them um, other than maybe a late frost that could come in. I might get, not get any fruit at all, but um, yeah, I just wholeheartedly recommend this as a backyard grower. Think about the form you want. Think about that aspiate form. Think about getting two different varieties, dip, ripen at different times. Maybe you might find that, again, your peaches late in the season just avoid a lot of the issues that you have earlier in the season or even vice versa. So, okay guys, thank you so much for watching this one. We'll see you for tomorrow's video and uh, take care.